विप्रो महाराज हरे कृष्णा प्लीज एक्सेप्ट माई हम्बल ओबेसेंसेस ऑल ग्लोरीज टू शीला प्रभुपाद ऑल ग्लोरीज टू यू एंड ऑल ग्लोरीज टू असेंबल डिवोटीज गुरु महाराज वी हैव ट्वेंटी सिक्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स एट द मोमेंट Okay, we'll begin in about one minute. Um, in the meantime, you can go for the verse from the Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter four, verse number thirty-eight. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Bhakti Bhatsa. Today we need to do the whole thing. Put it on, wait, and then when it's over, transfer it and take it in. Yeah. Uh, okay, as yes, long as you do the whole thing, because I'm, I have to leave it to a point. Yeah, make sure everything is clean and transferred. Okay. Okay, Om Gyan, Timirandasya, Gyanandana Salakaya. चक्षु उन्मीलिताुरव नम उम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण प्रस्ताय भूतले श्रीमक्तिवामी नमें नमस्ते सरस्वतीदेव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष सिंधुवादी पश्चात्यदे सुथारिणे वंशकुभ कृपसिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नम नम जय श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवास गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Before we begin today's lesson, I just want to do a little overview. Um, many of you, I guess, we could say, or I would surmise, weren't taking part in this um, daily talk that we've been having ever since the middle of March. This uh, class that we've been doing has been uh, going steadily for almost ten months. I miss Phil Ben and get classes, but in those ten months, um, we covered. I think, oh, uh, um, dozens and dozens of different subject matters, topics, discussions, practical, spiritual, philosophical. Um, the list is long, and all of that has been recorded and placed on the Zoom. So all of that is available for anyone who wants to take a look into the past and see what we've talked about. The reason why I'm bringing that up is that because one of my desires for having this, along with giving the knowledge out, is to inspire devotees to take more responsibilities, both in their Own practice of spiritual life, and that in giving Krishna consciousness to others, which includes um, understanding our position in terms of where we are spiritually and where we need to go to. In other words, one of the principles of devotional life is to know. Where you are on the spiritual platform, and to uh, understand what you need to do, 
in order to get to the next stage of bhakti because bhakti is a like a ladder it's a transcendental ladder <clears throat> that has nine stages in it and each of the stages is successive, successive of the other when one stage is complete one naturally moves to the next stage by adopting the principles of practice in the next stage. Now, we've talked a lot about the different stages, but two things are required in order to move forward within those different stages. There are many things that are required, actually, but two things that, I, that come to mind right now. One is knowledge of the pra practice, knowledge of the philosophy, and determination to achieve it. So before we get into the discussion, we'll read this one particular verse here. This is from the uh, Bhagavad Gita, and we'll begin. Nahi janena sadrisham pavitram iha vidyate tatsvayam yoga samsida kalenatmani vidyati. Translation In this world, there is nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Such knowledge is the mature fruit of all mysticism and one who has become accomplished in the practice of devotional service enjoys this knowledge within himself in due course of time. Srila Prabhupada's purport. Very small, I mean very concise, right to the point. When we speak of transcendental knowledge, we do so in terms of spiritual understanding. As such, there is no, nothing so sublime and pure as transcendental knowledge. Why? Because it is connected to spiritual progress. Ignorance is the cause of our bondage and knowledge is the cause of our liberation. So you hear two factors. What causes us to stay entangled in the material energy is ignorance of our relationship with Krishna, with things in general, in other words, with different uh, features of the material energy, and just um, ignorance of the goal. And of course, ignorance of how to get to the goal also. Now, this Prabhupada really sums up everything in this one line. Ignorance is the cause of bondage. Knowledge is the cause of liberation. So going from ignorance to knowledge is the process of getting out of the material energy or getting connected to Krishna in devotional service. And it's also the feature that drives one towards the goal, which is pure love of God. So in this statement, Prabhupada is mentioning a very huge section of the Vedas, which is called Sambandha. The Vedas consist of three sections, Sambandha, Abhideya, Prayojana. Sambandha means relationship. That is the direct definition of the word Sambandha. What is our relationship with Krishna? What is our relationship with people on different levels of existence, such as friends, family members, and people in general? What is our relationship with different devotees on different levels, such as equals, peers, and superiors? Equals, equals uh, superiors, and those who are in the lesser position? What is our relationship with the spiritual master? And all these uh, features of knowledge are the foundation for the practice of Abhideya. Abhideya is the process itself. It is bhakti. How to execute the, the uh, 
the process of bhakti in order to make progress on the path of devotional service. One can be performing the activities of bhakti and not making any progress. That is possible if one is not aware of two things, and these two things are the features of knowledge. One, what is favorable for devotional service and what is unfavorable for devotional service. These are principles that are foundational to making progress of devotional service because by knowing what is favorable, one will progress, but by not knowing what is not favorable, one will not take advantage of the process of devotional service. For instance, if one is chanting Hare Krishna, but one is chanting with offense, one will get very little or any benefit from the chanting. Some, but depending, if there's a few offenses, there's still there's some little benefit, but if there's a lot of offenses, as the scriptures say, then practically no benefit is given. So this is an example of knowing what, what is the positive, the chanting, and what is the negative, or what is the, what we have to avoid, the offenses. So in order to acquiesce knowledge in a right way, or in a complete way, Another principle is mentioned, and that is determination. I think we discussed this in some of our talks about what is determination, how to acquiesce determination, what is the benefit of determination when it's applied, and where to apply determination. Okay, so I'll just finish the purport. This knowledge is the mature fruit of devotional service. So this knowledge is the mature fruit of devotional service. And this transcendental knowledge brings one to the devotional service in what we say in, in, in success, in other words, successful devotional service. And when one is situated in transcendental knowledge, this is interesting, in other words, transcendental knowledge is not separate, becomes part of you, then that person need not search for peace anywhere else, for he enjoys peace within himself. And Prabhupada ends with a very simple statement, this knowledge and peace culminates in Krishna consciousness. That is the last word in the Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada didn't have to say much. He said it all in kind of sutra type form in a few sentences here. And what is that? He's talking about the process and how to take advantage of the process. Transcendental knowledge. Now, when one is practicing devotional service, one of the features that is required in order to make advancement in devotional service is one has to become determined to achieve the goal. So therefore, in this statement, there is also two principles. What is determination? How to apply determination? What affects determination in a positive way? What affects determination in a negative way? And what is the goal that one is becoming determined to achieve? If we have determination just in the process of devotional service, but we don't know, or we don't have a fixed understanding of what is the goal, then we may find our determination brings us into different directions. Therefore, one should be very clear of what is the goal of devotional service. Now, when we come into Krishna consciousness, we may not be what we say, um, absorbed in the, the, the ultimate goal of devotional service. We might think, oh, devotional service is nice. It gets me relief from material suffering. Uh, the people in here are really nice people. They don't, take a, they don't try to cheat you like everybody else in the world. 
In other words, one may come to devotional service for, for material reasons and somehow keep those material reasons without going into that as a discussion, which it is a class in itself. We should under, we all go right to the point and that is devotional service is, is about Prema Pumarta Mahan. That is the actual goal of the devotional service and the means for practicing devotional service. To awaken one's love for Krishna. Mm -hmm. So the word awaken gives you an indication that it's already there. And it's like a person who is sleeping. You don't have to create, create the person to wake him up. All you have to do is wake him up. He's already there. So bhakti is already there within the heart. Nitya Siddha, Krishna Prema, Sabu Karunoi, Sravanari Siddhi Chitte, Kori E Udoi. And in the heart of all living entities, because all living entities are parts and parcels of Krishna, Krishna is pure love personified. Because we are part of him, we also have love, but our love is for him because we are connected to him eternally in loving devotional service. So that love is there. So knowledge is the direction by which one practices the deter determined execution of one's devotional service. If determination is not cultivated along with transcendental knowledge, then one will, as we mentioned earlier, one will be easily diverted. Now, what makes determination strong and what makes determination weak? Well, we've discussed that in previous sessions. But one of the things is, well, there's the, there's the positive and then of course there is the negative. The, the positive is to keep your focus on the goal. Determination is more than just being, being determined to practice Krishna consciousness. It means be, being determined to focus on certain short range and long range goals, short range goals, which ultimately lead to long range goals. Like one of the examples of the determination, this is a called a sankalpa. Sankalpa means a determined vow. I will chant my rounds attentively with devotion and develop a taste for chanting. So that's a determination. I want to get that taste for chanting. And then the knowledge that comes, or with the knowledge that is required in order to achieve that is both practical and spiritual. Practical means one of the arrangements that I need to make in order to facilitate this particular desire without any interference. In other words, the environment, my mood, getting enough sleep, everything, all of the practical things that come with having good chanting. And then of course, the spiritual part, understanding that Krishna's name is Krishna himself coming in the form of transcendental sound. So in other words, making a desired goal to achieve, to, to achieve ultimately pure chanting, which will lead to pure love for Krishna. So we can make these intermediate, or I will read and study every day Srimad Bhagavatam and understand what I read. I will write down what I read and I will repeat this, these words in order for me to get a greater, better understanding so I can remember what I read and therefore practice it uh, more readily. So these things are necessary. So we have to understand and one of the one of the one of the some of the principles that are necessary for uh, achieving our goal and that is one good sadhana steady and good sadhana, two, a right mentality, having the mindset of 
a devotee, in other words, developing the right mindset in order to practice the Krishna consciousness, understanding the goal and how to get to the goal, and that is the principle of knowledge, which we mentioned, which is mentioned here. And one of the most important principles, and that is dainya. Dainya means humility. Because humility allows for one other factor to become very, very strong, and that is the mercy of Krishna. As humility increases, the mercy of Krishna becomes more and more prominent in the devotee's life. But one has to practice this mood of executing the process in a determined way with the feature of humility attached to all of the activities that we perform. So that humility attracts the Lord and that attracts his mercy. And when that mercy becomes more and more profuse and more and more readily, then progress in devotional service is very rapid and then one can achieve pure love of God very quickly. And Prabhupada would also say, you can get it in one moment, or you may take you millions of years. It depends on you. <laughs> so this humility is very, and we can speak a little bit about humility. Humility means that one should feel them, themselves incapable of achieving their goal, but at the same time knowing that by practicing the principles that is necessary, then I could also become successful by applying these principles and the knowledge that is that features each of these principles to ultimately achieve the goal. We want to come to the perfection of devotional service. It's not enough to be satisfied with making some progress in this life and thinking, well, boy, I'll make a little progress in this life and then I'm, I'll just pick up where I left off in my next life. I'll get, a, I'll get a good birth because I was a devotee in this life. And then I'll just start again and then I'll make more advancement in my next life. Um, that somewhat lackadaisical and defeated, it's a defeatist attitude, because some people say, well, I can't do it in this life. I just don't have the uh, qualifications. But the qualifications and the knowledge is available. All one has to do is uh, become uh, proficient in developing these qualifications and the knowledge also connected. And then one can make progress very fast. So one should get rid of this defeatist attitude that I'll do it in the next life. I can't make it in this life. I'm too fallen. We should understand our fallen condition, but that's, that's humility. But at the same time, we should understand that the uh, the knowledge and the ability to achieve the goal is available through the mercy of the spiritual master as he teaches us how to execute the process of devotional service. Okay, so uh, we'll stop there at the half hour and we'll go to I can only go to two o'clock today, so we have a half hour for the discussion. So if anyone would like to make some comment or question. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You covered like the whole of Krishna consciousness today. It was so nice from Sambandha Abhide Prayojan to determination to the steps for determination and how to progress in devotional service and humility it was wonderful devotees if uh, you have any questions uh, please unmute yourself and um, please ask the questions or you can use the chat Hare krishna manisha mataji you have a question Hare krishna mataji dandavar pranam guru maharaji pranam to all devotees um, my question is that, um, Rumaraji, today you spoke about 
that love is only in Krishna, right? Like our true love if, with, if for us is only found in Krishna. And, um, but my, like, so my hey, intelligence... Hey, 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 let me qualify that. I mean, that's where it starts and that's where it is. But because everything is connected to Krishna, once it, it's found in Krishna, it spreads itself out to everything else. Oh, okay. It's that answers like my question. Yeah, it's not like it's just there and nowhere else. But that's where you have to find it in order to find it. Because um, Every, everything is Krishna's part and parcel. Everything is connected to Krishna. Okay, Guru Maharaj, that exactly answers my question before I even got to ask it. Because my question was going to be that like through the intelligence, I know that, you know, love can only be found uh, starting, like, as you just said, starting with Krishna, but my mind, you know, keeps wanting to search for love in the materialistic world from people, from things. So that was going to be my question, but you have already answered it. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Guru Maharaji, um, so just, I mean, for this question, like how to develop the love for Krishna, you have said, like, just follow the processes of bhakti, correct? Yeah, well, we can interject and apply the principle of bhakti as we do it. Bhakti is in the heart. It's there. And so we, we understand a little bit about the mood of love, we show love in this world. So we can also show love to Krishna by thinking about Krishna, by offering our prayers to Krishna. We can write letters to Krishna. We can express how much, how great he is and how wonderful he is and how much we want to serve him and show our love for him. These, all of these are also part of the process of bhakti. It's not a mechanical process where should we, do, do we do this and then we get a result. No. As we awaken our uh, knowledge of Krishna, we want to show, we want to relate that knowledge of him by showing our love for him in different ways. So that can be done easily. It's like if you want to show your love to someone, you can do that. You can do the same thing to Krishna. But the more we know about Krishna, the more natural it becomes to show our love for Krishna. Guru Maharaji, I love all of these examples, especially about writing the letters to Krishna. I love that. And uh, how we can share our expression of love for Krishna with other devotees that are like-minded? Well, first you find like-minded devotees. And then that is called Guyam, Guyam Pritchati, that uh, opening up one's heart and speaking confidential knowledge and hearing confidential knowledge. Uh, that's mentioned in the Nectar of Instructions in the fourth verse where there is six exchanges of love between devotees. Um, and uh, perhaps um, uh, Arch in the City could put that verse on the board. It's, uh, mm, yeah, the fourth verse in the Nectar of Instructions. Because the beginning of the purport is really interesting. So it's three, it's a uh, nectar of instruction, um, verse number four.
Okay, I want to read you the verse because I think the answer will be more complete once we get it. Okay. Tadati patigrinati guyam akyati prichti bhunte bhojite chaiva sarvedam priti lakshanam. Translation, mm -hmm. offering gifts in charity, accepting charitable gifts, revealing one's mind in confidence, inquiring confidentially, accepting prasadam and offering prasadam are the six symptoms of love shared by one devotee and another. Let's go down the purport here. Uh -huh. Let me see. There's one statement. Prabhupada mentions these things again, but he says one thing that I mean, it's really outstanding here. Go down a little further. Okay, so just one more line. Up. Society for Christian. Guru Maharaj, your voice is to facilitate. <laughs> okay, let's see. The International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Oops, we lost it. Where are we here? I think you went down to, you went, go, go up the page again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. See if you can highlight this here. Here, right here, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness has been established to facilitate these six kinds of loving exchanges. This society was started single-handedly because, but because people are coming forward and dealing with the society to give and take policy is now expanding all over the world. So this statement here, this whole society has been established to facilitate these six kind of loving exchanges between devotees. So this is foundational to the whole uh, Sangha of Vaishnav culture, these six things. So one of the six things, you can go back up the page, is to um, Open one's mind to the devotees. Three, four is inquiring from them about the confidential service of the Lord. Like that. So yeah, this is these six principles are actually um, foundational to all our relationships in Krishna consciousness. Right there. Yeah. And you see, honoring prasadam and giving prasadam to devotees is also one. Feeding the devotees and taking prasadam oneself. It's one of the six loving exchanges. Okay. Does that help? Yes, Guru Maharaj, very much. Thank you so much, Haribo. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Hipti, Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Please accept my humble obeisance of all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the devotees. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have got one question. And in, in, um, when you said uh, the process of Bhakti and 
it helps in the progress on the spiritual path. Then you mentioned that are we going on the right direction and progressing or we are not progressing in the spiritual path. Can you just explain a little bit more that how will we know that we are going in the right direction or not? Mm -hmm. uh, there's some, there, there are many indications, but there is some uh, more one, ones that are more principle. One is one is developing the qualities of a Vaishnava in everything they do, such as humility, tolerance, pridelessness, respect for others, uh, unaffected by happiness and distress, peacefulness, simplicity, learning the Shastras, um, for applying the knowledge of the Shastras to our day-to-day -day practice. Well, these are symptoms of the mode of goodness and characteristic of our developing in Krishna consciousness. That is one of the main ways to indicate another one, because we can get ecstasy at any time. Even devotees get ecstasy when they first come to Krishna consciousness. They get an ecstatic experience, but ecstasy is not an indication of advancement. It can happen to anybody, even the non-devotees sometimes get ecstasy when they come in contact with devotees. But the indications are one, these characteristics, and another one is uh, how much we're becoming eager to chant, to read, to serve, and especially to associate with devotees along with how much we are losing our attraction for the things and the activities that make up the material world. So this is also very foundational. How much you're looking, you're actually interested in Krishna and how much you're losing your attachment to Maya. So these are indications of advancement. Or indications of making advancement, yeah. That's, that really makes sense. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, Guru Maharaj, Mohanasini. Okay. Mohanasini, Radha Mataji has a question. Is it okay to feel as a poor servant? Uh, we're not poor because we're attached to the richest person in existence, Krishna. Poor means poor in what? We should feel humble, but humble humility and poorness and are not synonymous words. Poor is something that is something that is undesirable. But humble servant, that's the that's that's desirable. The word poor doesn't fit. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Mahatma Das Prabhu has a question. Um, Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. Uh, uh, my respects and love. I have a question related to like-minded devotees. Could you please elaborate more on that? Oftentimes, it seems that there are only few like-minded devotees to us. And oftentimes, it is hard to have their personal association or offer service together. Should mm -hmm. we still go in direction of trying to make it happen or just accept the reality that their company is not so available? Thank you. Well, it depends, but yeah, but it does does say we should seek out the association of like-minded devotees. That is a statement by the Acharyas. We should seek that out. 
but if it's not always, it may not always be available. So seeking it out may fall short. Right now we have, the only way we can really associate right now is through the media, but still that is a form of association. So we can seek that out also. So in one sense, the times we live in is giving us greater access to association because we can go anywhere in the world with this media. And at the same time, we don't have the personal association, but still that association is there to some degree. So yes, I would say one should make some effort to find like-minded association, yeah. And, you know, you'll be surprised when you make the effort, things happen. <laughs> Guru Maharaj, this is Manisha Dandavat Pranam. I wanted to share just one little, um, my reflection on this uh, with everyone. Maybe it'll help you. That uh, before I was able to join this class, I prayed for one whole year every day I prayed for the association of Sri Guru Maharaj and after one year the Lord answered my prayers in a miraculous way sometime I can share the story that how I got uh, association of Guru Maharaj daily through this class through this medium uh, I was following all the daily posts you know quotes on the Facebook and sharing them on my WhatsApp status everything mm -hmm. And uh, now that I have this association through this class, I am getting such nice association, Lavanya Mataji, Sri Devi Mataji, Anusuya Mataji, so many Matajis, I'm getting association where they are like-minded devotees. And I feel so blessed that I have like-minded uh, Matajis that I can share my personal thoughts with. We encourage each other with our Krishna consciousness. We give blessings to each other. We praise uh, the Lord and the Guru, and we have such nice discussions. So just keep it in your heart. Krishna will answer your prayers, and Krishna, Srila Prabhupada does answer your prayers. You pray sincerely, and you will get the association. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Right to the point. <laughs> Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for pointing out how important it is for us not to take up this defeatist attitude, but to keep pressing forward. It just seems that sometimes it's very, very hard, given our anarthas, to go past certain blocks that we have or to be determined, especially in these difficult times. So association so becomes... Prabhupada said, you just come to me and I can kick out all of your obstacles with one swift kick. Jai. Haribol. <laughs> you don't think, the, you don't think the, the spiritual master can get kick your my obstacles out. But if you like your obstacles, then that's a problem. Yeah. I can see how I'm talking my own self. Yeah, we we have to understand that there's certain things that we like that may be obstacles, and you don't even recognize that they're obstacles. Right, right. But Prabhupada said, he said, well, with one swift kick of my boot, I can kick out all, 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 what did he say? All, uh, all obstacles, yeah. All and my that's true. The spirit and spiritual master can do it. He can just relieve you, relieve one of their obstacles. So basically, it's lack of surrender, lack of faith, 
uh, attachment to our own ideas and uh, you know whatever uh, our own blocks we are more attached to that than following the process correctly well these things floating around in our mind and we the understanding of what we have to do is given to us but because we can't process it properly because we're still attached to our own ways of doing things we wind up gravitating back to the same thing mm. we have to hear mm -hmm. and then understand apply mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah And then what is this position? I'm trying to understand it. And we actually reach this position of actually, actually loving Krishna. Uh, what, is, what does that look like? I mean, does this person then have unconditional love for everyone? Do they, do they radiate love to everyone? What, 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 how do we know this person has love of God? That love extends itself out into into seeing everyone as part and parcel of Krishna and seeing everyone as an object of one's service. Service is an expression of love. When we serve Krishna, then that love awakens and as that love awakens, the emotions that are attached to that love start to manifest. And that's on the, the platform of, of bhava, where certain symptoms, tears in the eyes, separation from Krishna, hearing about Krishna's qualities and pastimes attracts us more and more to Krishna. Wanting to be with Krishna, all these things are, are just symptoms of that loving, loving uh, awakening. You just read, you, if you really want to get a, a good understanding of the whole science of bhakti as it plays itself out step by step, I highly recommend you read Jaiva Dharma by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And it's easy to read because it's a dialogue. The whole book is a dialogue between guru and disciple. Have you read okay. it? Yeah, Jaiva Dharma by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Have you read it yet? No, Guru Maharaj. I'm sorry, I haven't. That's, that's a requirement for all his kind devotees. Prabhupada made that a requirement. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, he said, we must read Bhakti Vinoda Kaur's book, Jaiva Dharma. Okay. I will definitely... It's called, yeah, it's Jaiva. Somebody posted on a Jaiva Dharma. That's it by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And because it's a dialogue, you'll find it, it's an interesting read. It's just, it does, it's just not dry philosophy. It takes the devotee mm. going through different stages. And as he's experiencing his, his knowledge that he's getting from his spiritual masters, he's experiencing so many events within the environment in di with different types of groups, with different types of people. He's learning, he's associating, he's disassociating. It's interesting. It's really an interesting book. I've read it twice. Okay, I will definitely try to get the book and read. Yeah, get, get, the, get, get the ISKCON version. There is a, the Gaudiya Moth version, which I don't recommend. Get the ISKCON version. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Okay. I will definitely do that. And thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Please kick out all the Maya from my head. I will be so grateful. It's not hard if you, if you want to be kicked out. <laughs> yes, I welcome and relish all the kickings and beatings, Guru Maharaj. I want all the blastings now. 
I don't want to get blasted back to this material world at the time of death. Better if I get everything now. If you keep that principle that you don't want to come back and you want to go back to God, and then that, if you keep your mind focused on that, then whatever you have to do to get there will become revealed to you. This is our point of our whole discussion. The goal facilitates or helps to reveal the steps by which we can achieve the goal. If we don't want to go back to Godhead, then we won't see how to do it either. Right. Right. Definitely, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Praying for your mercy. Thank you. Okay, we'll take one more question, and then we have to end today at 2 o'clock. Or, I mean, at 1 o'clock, your time. 2 o'clock, my time. Guru Maharaj, we will miss our chanting today. I'm going to have to pass it up because of my schedule today. But uh, that doesn't mean you can't do it. Guru Maharaj, I just wanted to say that uh, after Sri Devi Mataji's uh, question, that I always love to remember Sri Prabhupada's example about the mother that has to cut the child's boil. You know, that at first it's painful, but later on the child will heal. <laughs> Thank you.